The design that I am using for these shirts, I purchased from an indigenous friend, and I'll leave her information down below for anyone else who would like to purchase. Her name is Lindsay Cossidy, and you can contact her through Facebook Messenger. If you don't have Facebook, just let me know, and I will get a hold of a copy for you. She was asking $5 donation for the design and she's donating that to a group in her own community. I will be making a donation with my own personal money to a local organization, one of our local reservations. But all the funds from this video, from the moment it published until the end of its time on YouTube, will be gathered and sent to a rotating charity for Indian residential school survivors. I will do this on a monthly basis. And I'm gonna put some links down below in case anybody else is interested in donating. If you're unable to do so monetarily at this time, letting this video play and run through the ads is what brings in the money. So that's something you can do to help out. You can also share this with friends and family and ask them to do the same. We'll get to the meaning behind orange shirts shortly, but first we need to talk about where it all comes from, residential schools. When the European settlers came to Canada and were interacting with the Native Americans, things took a turn. Over the years, treaties were signed and then the Indian Act came in. Through this act, it basically meant that the government could control the indigenous people. This was the perfect breeding ground for residential schools. In the 1830s, the government implemented residential schools. These were institutions that were designed to be far away from the native population, far away from the homes of the children who would eventually attend them. Across Canada, there were at least 139 of these schools. They were run by the Catholic Church, the United Church, the Anglican Church, Methodist, and Presbyterian. There was also some non-denominational schools, as well as schools that weren't run by the government, but were private. In these 139 schools, it's estimated that over 150,000 Indigenous kids attended. These children were taken from their homes by Indian agents. This was done by force, often with the attendance of a police officer. If parents didn't agree, they were fined or even thrown in jail. These kids were made to attend these boarding schools far from home, designed to be hundreds or thousands of kilometers away from their families, with limited to no allowed contact with the people they knew, their culture. If siblings went to a school together, they were separated, not allowed to speak to one another or even be caught exchanging glances. These institutions were meant to beat the Indian out of the child. They were not allowed to talk in their native languages. They were not allowed to perform any of their customs. No familiar foods their beautiful long hair chopped or buzzed off, their colorful clothing taken away, their birth names stripped from them. They were given a number and sometimes white names. You might be thinking that the 1830s was a long time ago. It was, but actually the last school closed in the 1990s. I was five, my daughter's five now. Children as young as five or even three were taken to these schools. Decades of all type of abuse, including sexual, physical, verbal, and mental, happened in these walls. Neglect, malnourishment. Children were denied their basic needs. They were also denied health care if something were to happen to them. Children weren't really at this institution to learn. It wasn't a school like we think of now. They were being brainwashed and forced to work, upkeep the buildings and the grounds, to cook and clean. This was genocide. 
Over the last year, there have been investigations into these residential school sites. The Indigenous peoples always knew the truth, as well as a select group of white people. These sites hold secrets, horrible, horrible truths. And we are now starting to learn them. They've discovered over 1,300 graves across only five of the residential school sites. 215 at Kamloops, 751 at Cowessis, 182 at Cranbrook, 160 at Cooper Island, and 104 potential graves in Brandon. Five out of 139 sites. So why do we celebrate? What are we celebrating? September 30th is a day for truth and reconciliation. The government of Canada has acknowledged the pain. The government of Canada has acknowledged that something needs to be done. There is a document available for reading. This came through the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the final report is available to everyone. It was on display at one of my local libraries the other day when I was in there. It's available to the public and anybody can read it. But why the orange? One little girl named Phyllis, when she went to residential school, she had a beautiful bright orange shirt taken from her. She was no longer allowed to wear her colorful clothing. She was forced to wear gray or beige or whatever the boring brown was of that school. So today and every day, we celebrate color for the children who suffered, for the survivors who are now sharing their truths, who for decades have been recovering from the traumas that they faced and saw in these institutions, for the heartache that they felt being ripped from their families and prohibited from being with anybody they knew. Alone, unsure, confused, just some of the many things these children could have been feeling. If you're looking for more information, I'll have links down below. I've also listened to the audiobook of Seven Fallen Feathers by Tanya Talaga and I Am Indian by Fred Sasakamoose. The next book on my nightstand is Birdie by Tracy Lindbergh. I'm also taking a course on Coursera. It's a course through the University of Alberta and it's called Indigenous Canada. I'm only a couple weeks in, but I'm finding it to be very, very informative and it's totally free. I'll link that below as well. If we look at this design, we're seeing all sorts of beauty, but also all sorts of pain. And as I was making these shirts, I took the time to be very present in what I was doing as a form of therapy and, and education. I really wanted to focus on what was happening in this design by Lindsay, what it meant. And honestly, it's unfathomable. How could I imagine having my kids taken from me? How helpless forced to be someone they're not, being told everything I do is savage. The more I've been learning, the less understanding I've been gaining. Yes, I understand more about the First Nations people of our country, about their culture, about their values but less and less about the ancestors of the rest of us. Less and less that I want to know anyway. Less and less understanding of the human race, of kindness, of what I thought was human kindness, something that I thought was just we were born with. Thank you so much for watching this video and for maybe learning a little bit more than you knew before.